The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve from BoatTest.com, and today I'm on the 500S by Prestige. This is a boat that combines luxury with affordability, and I'm going to show you just how they've done that as we take a look at our full features and layout walkthrough. I love the alfresco dining and gathering area, and if you lower the table and add a filler cushion, you have a sun pad. Even with the seating here, we still have ample storage underneath. Let me show you what I mean. Complete storage for a 10-foot tender with an outboard attached. Rollers for easy launch and retrieval, and an electric winch forward to pull it into the boat. Quick connects for hose wash down, and inside this hatch, controls for the Glendening cable reel. This is where the hose with the quick release will come in handy, and there's a drain right in the center of the deck. The swim platform measures 14 feet 6 inches across by 3 feet. There's a four-step reboarding ladder, and notice that the second person in the water has a little handhold to hang on to while waiting for the first person to get out. The teak decking that we see on the swim platform and in the cockpit is standard. Convenient safety item, the stainless steel grab rail going across the swim platform. Happy to see concealed storage for a passerelle. Now there are three deck hatches in the cockpit. The outer two are for giving you access to the engine room. The center gives you access to your tender so you can load it up before you launch it. So what we have in this engine compartment are two IPS 600s and you're going to love the way Prestige takes advantage of this installation when we get inside. On the forward bulkhead, Cummins Onan Marine Generator, dual fuel tanks. Both fuel tanks have the fuel filter attached right to the side of the tank. On the port tank, you've got a battery charger. On the starboard tank, you've got an automatic discharge fire extinguisher. The warping winch to port is standard and optional is available for the starboard side. Let's move up to the bow. The sun pad will lay flat or, as you can see, tip up into the chaise lounge position. The awning for the sun pad is a unique feature which opens and closes very easily. At the bow, a Lumar windlass, plenty of room for your chain and anchor. Four 14 inch cleats on either side of the boat. I'm very happy to see that Prestige meets requirements by making the rails 28 and a half inches high. Grab handle on the side of the deck and you've got 15 inches of walk space between the windshield and the rail. And notice how the rails are angled out a little bit, just to give you a little bit more room, but they don't seem to extend beyond the rub rail. Always a convenient option. Second control station in the cockpit. Now let's go inside and take a look at how luxury meets affordability. Prestige wanted to create a theme of keeping the days above deck and nights below deck, and one of the ways they did that was creating the galley in the aft end of the salon. While it looks elegant and functional, the affordability comes in from mainly the counters, which are not granite or corian, but resin. The real reason for using this material on the counters, though, is it won't crack like granite will when you start encountering heavy seas. Now, the three burner electric stove is recessed, so there's no need for C rails, but I'd like to see a micro cutoff switch somewhere in the perimeter so that when you put the covers back on, the power goes off. I'd also like to see this faucet have a pull-out wand. There's no shortage of storage space in the galley. The refrigerator opens with the outer door, and the freezer door opens independently. And to ensure that the chef remains an integral part of the action, the sliding glass doors open from here, giving you easy access to the aft cockpit. In the salon, opposing seating keeps everyone in the conversational zone. The seats are very comfortable. A nice fold-out table makes the salon into an impromptu dining area. Now, one other nice feature of this salon, the windows that not only give you a panoramic view, but are low enough so that you can see the horizon from a seated position. That does a surprisingly good job of keeping Mal de Mer at bay for your more land-based guests. Another way Prestige keeps the 500S cost effective is the leather seats. Not ultra leather, but comfortable nonetheless. Six feet, six inches of headroom in the main salon. And even with the hardtop, you're going to find that you're not going to have headroom problems, even with your tallest friends. I also like how you're at the same conversational level with the captain at the helm, who is just a small step up. Now let's take a look at some of the details of the helm. Very modern helm layout with two Raymarine E120 widescreen displays to either side, autopilot in the center, 
up above analog gauges for your tachometers with the engine hours embedded inside and I love having a rudder angle indicator even with IPS. Here's an interesting feature, a rubberized paint on the dash so it's non-reflective. Two things I'd like to see changed is one, the location of the climate control. On two separate occasions, I accidentally bumped that and turned it from air conditioning to heat. Second, I'd like to see the remote control for the spotlight moved over to the left side of the helm so that your observer can give you a hand in navigating at night. Well, you're looking at five feet, five inches of standing headroom behind the helm and that's just not gonna be good enough. So you're gonna look at sitting at the helm while you're driving or open up the sunroof and stand. With the sunroof open, you're looking at 36 square feet of open air, bringing the outdoors in. Prestige also does a great job of ensuring no leaks by making a positive close to seal off the roof. Now, if you want additional ventilation as well as visibility out the side of the boat, very convenient feature when docking. Now, let's take a look at the forward accommodations. To port is a guest stateroom with twin berths, six feet six inches of headroom dropping down to five feet three inches. A nice trade off between luxury and affordability is going from upholstery to fiberglass. The guest accommodations also have a separate climate control. The forward VIP features five feet nine inches of headroom and twin berths, but this just won't do when you have a married couple on board. Easily accommodated. Additionally, individual climate control for this stateroom and separate entrance to the day head, which is also accessible from the companionway. The head features overhead cabinets with mirrored doors and a countertop basin sink, as well as a closable shower stall. Now you remember when we were looking in the engine room how I told you that Prestige takes full advantage of that IPS installation? Let's take a look how they've done that. A beautifully appointed private owner suite. Over the berth, three feet six inches of headroom, dropping down to two feet ten inches. Here's an interesting feature, booth style seating over on the port hand side and if we had to go ahead and be sexist and say that this would be her seat with a vanity. Here is the master head with separate shower. Well, that's our look at the features and layout of the Prestige 500S. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.